Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So I find the whole Taylor Swift thing super fascinating because whether you love her, hate her, anything in between, this woman has accomplished so much at, I say, such a young age. She's about my age. She's a little younger than me. And the poise she has, the way she handles things, I really admire about her. Now, you may think differently. You may disagree. You may also love her, hate her, anything in between. I don't know. I tend to see her be really polarizing. And it's really hard to ignore anything about her in the news. Everyone basically knows who she is, whether you like her or you don't. And like her music or you don't, I should say, too. And, you know, there are a few things that, as I got more exposed to Taylor Swift in the past, we'll say six months, that I was never a fan before, by the way. I never really liked her music. It was kind of, it was catchy and I always hummed it to myself, but like I would never choose that on Spotify, let's say. I would never go out and seek out listening to her music more than it was already being heard. But what I realized was this past year, I kind of opened my mind up to listening to more of it. I studied a bit more about her as a businesswoman and I learned a ton about you know, about business. And I saw so much of these aspirational qualities in her that I was hoping to achieve. And I thought, you know, unexpectedly, I learned a ton about business from Taylor Swift this year, because as you probably know, my brain tends to unpack things, but be looking for the parallel example, looking for the analogy, looking for the thing I can use to explain something. And I I tend to try to tap into a familiar feeling of, oh, it's kind of like when I feel this way. And using that to not only teach you on this podcast some of these more complex financial things, but also to kind of identify my feelings and to parallel them and align them together so I can compare and identify those feelings. So what I wanted to do was tell you a few business lessons, I think, that Taylor Swift embodies, but also what I'm taking away from it and how I'm applying it. Because... I really think these are invaluable and she may not be teaching them directly. I mean, she's the queen of cryptic messages, but what's so cool is that if you watch her long enough, you'll pick up on these things. And I think it's why I'm becoming a fan of her and her music because I'm noticing these little small qualities that I think are really interesting from a business standpoint. So number one, I love that she seems to be playing the long game And as business owners, we need to be playing the long game. We need to have a strong enough why behind what we do to bring an idea fully realized into life. Now, I really thought this was interesting how when she, whether you are like team Scooter Braun or team Taylor Swift, like I was really interested to find out that she had her masters sold. And in response to that, she decided to go re-record all of her albums. Now, whether, you know, whatever way you feel about that situation, what was super cool is she was willing to go back in and do the work and go back in and re-record all the albums, undertake a massive effort because she knew that on the back end that it was going to be a sensation. It was going to be huge. Not only was it going to make her a ton of money, but it was going to make a statement and she was going to enroll an entire fan base into this passionate story of how she was wronged and how she was going to go out and work herself out of it. And it was a really interesting dynamic because what I thought was so cool was that like the moral of the story was outwork the other person. That if you feel like you've been wronged, if you feel like you have somehow been short-sighted or looked over or underestimated, Taylor's response has typically been to those situations, okay, watch me. (laughs) I'm going to go outwork you. I'm going to go out earn you. I'm going to go and achieve my own success so that you can basically eat it. Now, mature or not, (laughs) whether the intention is mature or not, 
I think that's an interesting way to approach it because I think we can all learn more from playing the long game in our own businesses, staying in our own lane. And if somebody else is doing something to try to sideswipe you, you just drive in your lane faster, get to where you're going faster, and you just ignore them. And if you can achieve your own success, success is the best revenge. There is no need to tear others down. There is no need to, you know, pull anyone else down to make yourself look better, that you can actually succeed just on your own by focusing. And I think that the more that you can keep those blinders on when it comes to those types of challenges, the better off you'll be. Not just mentally, I think you'll be less stressed out, but I think you'll also accomplish success a lot easier. And that goes along with another kind of lesson that I've unpacked is doing things for yourself and not for others. You know, work on your own goals. Do it anyway. You don't have to do what people expect of you. You don't have to be the person that people want you to be. You can choose to live your own life. And, you know, at a certain point, people are going to talk shit about you, no matter if you are succeeding or you're failing. No matter what you're doing in your business, somebody will have something to say about why that's wrong and you should do something better. You know, we should definitely absorb feedback for sure and be self-aware and think about, is there any validity to that, right? And seek out feedback. But at a certain point, you should also be aware that everyone's going to have an opinion and not every opinion requires your action. And I think that, you know, when you try to be what everyone wants you to be, or try to internalize that feedback and think you're doing something wrong, that it can send you even further off course. There was this other interview that Taylor did that I thought was really interesting. It's this, the content is just crossing my social media left and right. I don't know about you, but I'm getting reels like crazy of Taylor Swift interviews. Something in my algorithm is kicking in. But there was this interesting interview she did where she said, you don't have to forget to forgive. You don't have to forget to forgive that you can forgive and you can move on. And you never have to forget what happened to you or what someone did or what how you felt or anything like that. But you can just forgive and move on to give yourself the peace to just be done with worrying about that and any drama and any situation. And I think that this was true of so many things, including employee relationships, including client relationships, where you know, something went sideways. I'm sure you can relate to this as a business owner where something went sideways, something just didn't work out. And you just said, you know what? Like, I feel really wronged. I feel really taken advantage of by a client. I feel like I resent them. I can't wait to get rid of them. I can't wait to get rid of this service provider who screwed me over. I can't wait to do, you know, this employee who doesn't do anything. And you can absolutely 100% in a civil way, you don't have to break up with them you know, by disclosing everything they ever did wrong to you or justifying it or really breaking down here are all the reasons why I'm right and you're wrong because you win nothing by proving you're right. And you're definitely not going to, you know, enroll them in your idea that you're right about everything. And you're just going to invite a fight and invite this to prolong. So one thing that I've noticed is by her saying that, but you don't have to forget to forgive it's kind of like this, uh, give yourself permission to allow yourself to be peaceful and not forget what happened, but also not let it dwell and not let it be something that eats at you. Hey, Shannon here, and I have a quick favor to ask. If you're enjoying this podcast and enjoying this episode, please leave us a review on your podcast platform, whether that's Apple, Spotify, Amazon, any of them, and let us know if you're enjoying the show. One of your biggest takeaways, we would really, really appreciate it. Okay, back to the show. And that's a really important lesson just in life, forget business, but just in life. Another thing that she said in, I believe it was an acceptance speech, another clip that I saw was she said something like no career or business or venture comes free of negativity. That was really powerful for me because I was thinking about this and saying, yeah, she's right. Because if you're seeking, you know, a career or success in life and you are anti-negativity, like you're trying to avoid negativity as a priority, you're going to have a conflict because you're going to be encountering negativity left and right you know, entrepreneurship is the massive lesson in personal development. And one thing I've learned is that 
you will get criticized. You are not everyone's cup of tea. That is okay. It's not supposed to be that way. And you will be criticized. You will not get along with everyone. You know, employees will quit. You will fire employees. You will fire clients. Clients will quit. And that is okay. (laughs) You know, whether that is your version of negativity or not, you know, you will be criticized, especially when you're successful. People will find reasons to criticize you because they will look into, they will look to themselves and realize that they have a shortcoming or an insecurity and they will take that out on you without a doubt. They're going to find a way to tear you down to make themselves feel better. It's just how it goes. And God, you cannot help the comment sections. I mean, I had a taste of virality this past year where a couple of my reels went a little bit bonkers and I got like 3 million views or something on them. And what I realized was one of them in particular was apparently controversial, but like not really. It was kind of a joke and it was kind of a, you know, one of those throwaway reels like, huh, this is kind of funny. I'm going to post it. And what ended up happening was a bunch of people commented and I found myself getting wrapped up in responding to a few of the comments because like the first few comments were like, yeah, totally. And they were productive comments. And here's what I learned. Uh, Pro tip on social media. If you do have a, a post go viral, turn off the comment notifications after the first hour, because after that, it's just randos <laughs> and they don't deserve your time or response. So I would really, I would encourage you to, you know, you're never going to have a career or life free of negativity. So the best thing you can do is learn to cope with it. And honestly, repeated exposure. It's kind of like an allergy. You're probably going to get over it if you are repeatedly exposed to the thing that your body is rejecting. So if you find yourself in tougher situations more frequently, you'll be able to handle them a lot better because it's just going to be another rep. And then finally, this last one I just thought of too, as I was thinking about her career, I was thinking about how her music has evolved and how really different every single one of her albums has been from a sound perspective, from a theme perspective. I really like how it's evolved. I like a little bit of everything. And I think it's why I like her music now is because I can pick a few songs in every album that I particularly enjoy and it doesn't sound repetitive to me. But what's interesting is she is really the embodiment of earning the right to go wide, as we put it. And Gary Vee talked about this. I've heard it talked about by several people in the business world where you basically go deep and earn the right to go wide. She started her career in country music. She decided to niche into that because she knew that she was uniquely positioned due to her geography in Nashville. She knew she was positioned to succeed in that market, and she did, and she got in. And then as her music evolved, as she evolved as a person, she started to expand and started to go more into various genres. She went into kind of like an indie sound. She went into a pop sound. She went into more like a what would you call midnights? I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit more, uh, it's probably another word for that, but (laughs) a more soulful, I guess, type of sound. And it's been really an interesting evolution. If you listen to the music of like, wow, this one person can accomplish so many different things, but she did not have the permission to do that when she was a teenager. She had to earn the right. She had to develop the fan base. She had to focus on one thing that she did really well. And then she could go a little bit wider and expand. And this goes for you too, that a lot of people are trying to do all of this variety, be multi-passionate and do all of these things right out the gate. And while that may be fun for you, I'm going to tell you that you'll find your profitability, you'll find your success when you can narrow down, when you can focus and when you can do one thing exceptionally well that people will become, what people will come to know you for. And then. And only then will you be welcomed into the world where you can do a lot more and speak to a lot more topics and you can become an expert in a variety of things. This podcast being an example. So this podcast started and I started talking mostly around business tax strategies. And I don't know if you've noticed, if you've been listening to this podcast for a hot minute, you know, in 2021, I think we started the show. Wow. Yeah. 2021. I was talking about early stage business and taxes and stuff like that. And I still do. But 
what's happened was we developed an audience that really wanted to more tax strategy. We wanted more talking about, you know, things that business owners struggle with from a financial standpoint. And then as we got known for that and we started to actually hit the charts, we expanded into, you've heard a lot of episodes on marketing and sales. You've heard my take on these strategies, episodes like this one, where I can just share stories about my own business, my clients' businesses, and the things that we're encountering as fractional CFOs that may be relevant to you. And we do have a sort of content structure that we follow in terms of the different topics we discuss, but it's expanded greatly since those first few days because those first few months, days, weeks, they were all full of episodes that really followed a couple of core themes and we became known for those things. So we kind of put in our homework, put in our dues and said, okay, we're going to become known for this and be, you know, well received for it before we go any more wide. And I think that works. I really do. I think that if you came along early on in this podcast and you thought, oh, yeah, I'll listen to Shannon. She makes me understand tax stuff a lot easier. Well, here we still are. And I haven't talked about a tax topic in God knows how long. And you may not remember that. <laughs> I may have just reminded you that I barely talk about taxes anymore in this podcast. And there's intention behind that. It's because people will seek out tax-related content thinking their strategy and ignore the very things that they really need to be focused on. The bigger picture stuff is your as a CEO. The things that are going to matter a lot sooner than your tax strategies will. Earning before you worry about keeping more of what you earn. And that's a really interesting take on it, but you may not realize that that's the approach that we've been taking for several months now. So I'm going to encourage you that if you're thinking about doing something similar, if you're thinking about you know, creating content or starting a business, just remember that the best thing you can do is learn how to focus your attention, focus your efforts and earn the right to go wide. And I believe that's actually what Taylor did as well. So like I said, there's a ton to learn from her. And again, whether you like her or not, I think it's a great case study. I think she's a great example of how these different principles come into play. If you really unpack why she's successful, there's a ton to learn. Hey, small business owners, are you tired of juggling payroll benefits and HR tasks? If so, I want to introduce you to our payroll provider of choice, Gusto, the number one rated HR and payroll platform trusted by thousands of businesses just like yours. With Gusto, you can streamline payroll, manage benefits, and more all in one easy to use platform. But here's the kicker. When you sign up and run your first payroll through our special link below in the show notes, you'll score a sweet deal, a $100 Visa gift card. That's right. Just a hundred dollars for clicking the link below and get started to claim your reward. Don't let payroll headaches hold you back from building your team and growing your business. Join the Gusto family today and take the first step towards simplifying your HR processes while snagging a bonus along the way. Click the link in the show notes now to learn more and set up your payroll. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.